This is Swarfcast. I'm Noah Graf. I'm very honored to be with Rogerio Misadri from Samot, Mexico. Welcome to the show, uh, Rogerio. Sorry, Rogerio and Rogerio is difficult for me because Rogerio is from Brazil. And I don't know if many people know this, but in Portuguese, the R is pronounced with an H. So anyways, you are the director at Samot, Mexico, but you are from Brazil. So first of all, I want the, the two minute summary of Samut, Mexico, and then I want to get a little bit of your story. Yeah, Samut, Mexico started operation in 2009. Uh, Samut, Mexico came from, Samut came from Mexico because uh, our main customer, Bosch, Robert Bosch, invited us to have another facility out of Brazil because they are very good and the, big, the biggest supplier, the biggest supplier of, of Bosch. So Samut is a huge... Uh, machining company in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Yes, in Sao Paulo there are uh, three facilities, two facilities from machining and one facility we made some bars and profile of aluminum, okay. hard alloys. And the main sector is automotive. Yeah, of course in Brazil there are more, uh, not 100% automotive, but in more than 90% is automotive. Okay, okay. Let's go backward now. I want the, uh, the three-minute bio. How did you get into this business, and how did you get to Samo in Mexico? Yeah, I started this business. My father started Samo and whole life, almost whole life. My father spent for two years in Samo. How old are you? I'm 45. 45, okay. 45 years old. And since I... I know my life. I I I I saw my father work at the summit and start. Of course, in the, in forty years ago, of course, the father and like in Europe, the the fathers uh, get get the the children during the vacation and spend some time in the companies. This is normal for us. Uh, and my father, uh, we love it, this manufacturing machining, and because this we. Uh, me and my brother uh, studied in a technical school in and you, Brazil. And you, you immediately liked manufacturing? Yeah, yeah, since the beginning. Since a child, a, a little child, I, I loved this manufacturing, the, how the, the transformation, the, the simple bar are very complex parts. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so then you went to trade school in Brazil and then you went to work at Samo in Brazil. And eventually you went up, I know this, we're, we're not really doing your story justice here, but you went up in the ranks and they said, okay, we have Samot Mexico. When did Samot Mexico start? Yeah, Samot Mexico started the operation in 2009. 2009. And they said, when, when did they send you over there? Right away? Yeah, I, I, I arrived in Samot Mexico 2014. 2014. Okay. So... We've set the stage. Samot, Mexico. Um, what kind of machines do you run, and are you primarily automotive? Yeah, Samot, Mexico is uh, we normally ma uh, machining the round parts, made parts. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, mud spindle is our uh, Samot, Mexico starts with mud spindle in the grinding, centerless grinding. As well, uh, Samot Mexico has uh, anodizing line. This is our difference, differential in the market because normally the, the manufacturing companies don't have this anodized. This anodized we bring because we, we have lessons learned in manufacturing in, in Brazil, the pistons. Of course, Samot Mexico starts with brake pistons. In brake pistons, we have machining, precision, machi machining, grinding, and anodizing. And you, you provide the full service. Uh, from the, the supplier and, and it's so competitive because you need to don't don't need to move the parts and another another supplier to have this anodizing right, and provide right. so you're doing, full wow, solution. You're doing it all in house anodizing in house yeah wow that's very good um, what kind of multi spindles do you have just to set the stage yeah uh, index machine 
Mordecai machine, Wickham machines. Mordecai, okay, so we would call it Euroturn ZPS and, and Wickman. What, and right now, what, you're running all of them? The Wickmans, the Mordecai, and the Index? Yes, the, the CNC mode spindles, we run 100% of machines. We have a very few capacity available. Mm -hmm. But in a week, my machine is very difficult. Uh, we have a 70% of machines stopped because uh, the, the, the challenge is they fit some parts. Normally, the parts we can machine in week, my machine is simple parts. Mm -hmm. And normally, these parts can be directed from forging or precision casting. Uh, oh, really? So you're running the Wickmans like chuckers? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. And you don't see that very much. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 have it. We, we, we have some parts, a little bit complex parts in Wickman. But uh, is when, when, when we start to put more complex in Wickman, it's not competitive in the market. You need to, to have the right, the right product of this machine. Simple products mm -hmm. with not, not so much value added. And of course, the cost of raw material is impacted a lot. When we have a high, uh, like a, a stainless steel, simple parts in stainless steel, we are very competitive. Okay. So this brings me to something I had mentioned to you before. Um, Graf Pinkert, our used machinery business, many of the CAM multi-spindle machines we've sold recently have been to Mexican companies, uh, Davenport's, Wickman's. Do you think that there's more talent for running those machines in Mexico than you, the United States, or, or you don't really know to compare it to the United States? We think that there's more people in Mexico who are willing to run dirty mechanical machines than there would be in the United States. Yes, in Mexico there are talents, but in nowadays with the increase of the business, uh, we need to form the talents in 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 house. Some some of is our 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 skill. We, we don't hire the talents outside. We, we normally we we like contract the, the intern and start to form and you start to training to to do this. But but, it, but do you think there are a lot of people that say in Mexico, all right, manufacturing is a good job and manufacturing with cam machines, um, you know, that's good for me. Uh, you think that there's a lot of people in Mexico that, that want to do it? Yeah, what, one a very good skill of Mexican people that are a, a very good manual skill. The people like to do this, like to do, to, to talk to the machine, to adjust the machine. This, this is one thing is different in, uh, I believe is different in, in US. I don't, I, I, I can't compare because I don't know very well in, in, in US, but the, the, in Mexico, the people is, has a, a very good manual skill. Is that because like in other cultures like Mexico or, for, or Brazil, for instance, it's more like a fix-it culture. People yeah. are, yeah, yeah, are the same. I mean, here we just throw stuff out and get a new one. Yeah, it's similar. The culture is very similar. Okay, of course there are different because it's uh, different culture, different colonization. But uh, in the end, is the is Latin culture, and of course there are so similar of them. Uh, it's not it's not easy uh, for me Brazilian adapt with Mexican because there some some difference of cultures I'm sure yeah it's different yeah is is different in the end is different because of course I'm from Sao Paulo Sao yeah. Paulo is like a big center technology manufacturing centers uh, there are a lot of industry in, in, in Sao Paulo and when we move from Mexico we don't move from a very ski area very where are you in Mexico? In Guanajuato. Guanajuato. Yeah, the Bahio area. Of course, this area is the area uh, that has the growth, more growth in, in Mexico, in the area who uh, which assembly more cars in Mexico. Than anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, than anywhere else. And increase a lot, but it start to increase the, 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 the jobs and the business huge huge increase and now you're suffering about the miss everything labor the basic labor 
auxiliar labor, technical labor. This is the 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 the, the challenge we have nowadays. So you're having area. the same the same challenge, even though this is like. Would you say this is like the Detroit of Mexico? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe you have it the same because, of course, uh, this area, we, we, we are in uh, Guanajuato State and Silao. Silao, there are uh, General Motors, uh, trucks, trucks and SUV cars, uh, manufacturing site. And this started 25 years ago. And this area started to grow. Nowadays, only in the industrial park we have in Port Interior, there are more than 30,000 30. people, 30,000 employees in the same industrial district. 30,000 people in the same industrial park that yeah, your company more is than, in? Yeah, more than 120 companies in the, same, in the same industrial park. Wow. Okay. Well, that means that there is some skilled labor. Yeah. yeah. What, what is the average salary for... Or what are some of the salaries for somebody working in a manufacturing plant in Mexico? Yeah, they're, they're round. I, I will talk in terms of a, of a peso and comparing dollars, but it's around the cost of the labor, the direct labor around $1,000. $1,000 yeah, per week, per month? No, no. Uh, yes, per month. $1,000 per month. That's for what, a machine operator? Yeah, a machine operator overall. What about a setup person or somebody in management or the the, the technician is around one one point five two thousand thousand uh, dollar per month and manager around five thousand dollars a month a month okay this is complete cost from the company and that's the complete cost for the company. What are the people taking home? Mm, you can, of course, the low levels with the, the government take more, less, around 15%, and the management around 30%. Okay, okay. What does a doctor make in Mexico? Your, your wife is a doctor? Yeah, my wife is a doctor because when we move, my, my wife uh, graduated engineer, environmental engineer in Brazil, moved to Mexico, and of course, she had, she had a dream to be a doctor. But in Brazil, of course, this is one good thing in Mexico. The university is very good quality, and the cost is very good as well. Okay. And she became a doctor, and you told me that a doctor makes, uh, what, around $500 a week? Yep. Yep. Because I looked, I looked that up after I talked to you, and I, I, according to some website I looked at, they said they made $1,000 per month. Five hundred dollars per month, a thousand dollars per month, whatever it is, it's not a lot. Twelve thousand dollars a year versus six thousand dollars a year. I mean, it's incredible. They they said the average doctor in the United States makes over three hundred thousand dollars a yeah. year. So, in other words, you can make a lot more money working in a factory in Mexico than you can if you are a doctor. Yeah, sure, sure. That's a thousand dollars a month, or five hundred according to Hogerio. A month, not a week. Incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. But I know I I have some some people I I, I know uh, lives in U.S. go back go back to has a medical treatment and back from U.S. because it's cheaper. Sure, of course, of course. Um, so um, we've talked about labor a bit. So there is some skilled labor. But it sounds like you guys are having shortages as well. Yes, we, we, we have a shortage of labor. Of course, like I said, in our industrial park, we have more than 30,000 employees. But we have open, open position, 1,000 of open position only in my industrial park. 1,000 open positions and there's already 30,000 people. Yeah. How many open positions are at your company? Around ten position because it is. And how many? How many people are 200, working? Two hundred. Two hundred. Okay, two hundred people at your company. You have five percent. Okay, um, there's a lot of work now that you hear about coming back from China. Some of it is coming back to the United States, and a lot of it is going to Mexico. Yeah. Yes, because of course the Guanajuato area, uh, there are a lot of Asian, mainly Japanese. 
but see, they there's a lot of people yeah. that are Japanese in your area. Yeah, yeah, more Japanese because OEMs there are Toyota, Honda, and Mazda. There are assembly plants in this area. Okay, and there are a lot of Japanese. Including, but they're the management managers. No, no, no. Hall of levels because because so they it, bring they bring employees over from yeah, Japan. Yeah, because the the Japanese company managing li, like a little bit different because there are two managers. When Japanese manager who took the decision and local manager who only communicate with the people of with the employees. Normally, the technician came from Japanese because uh, the culture is huge different. I see. So they they think, all right, this is going to be crazy trying to manage people from such a different culture. Let's bring some of our own over. Yeah. That is really interesting. Okay. So you got that. But then we have a lot of work from China um, that, you know, people are having problem with supply chain. Uh, people are, labor is going up. You know, we're deciding that we're going to bring stuff back. A lot of that is going to Mexico rather than just go to the United States, correct? Yeah, it's correct. Because sometimes uh, in the past, we don't see any movement of Chinese and few Koreans. Now we have, we, we can saw a lot of movements of Chinese and Korean in this area. We don't know exactly what, what they do. But one, one thing, my impression is they start to buy Landfield and the other companies and start to to manufacturing in Mexico. Okay, of course, bring it the manufacturing from China from North America, including Mexico. Very interesting, and that is causing more shortages of people and shortages of equipment. Correct? Yeah, sure, sure. So uh, I, I should have introduced it before, but we're at IMTS right now. Are you buying equipment? New equipment from IMTS, or do you prefer to buy used equipment, both? De depends on the, the, the kind of line, but uh, normally we, we buy the used equipment, mainly the, the expensive equipment, Moot Spindle, we prefer. They bought an index from Graf Pinker. Yeah, sure. A couple, couple of these three years ago. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was good business. Um, are there many other companies with indexes in Mexico? Yeah, it starts because Samot is the first one uh, put uh, put an index machine in Mexico. But nowadays there are a lot of companies with index machine, including there are companies that are much more index than Samot. Interesting, interesting. Uh, what machines are you looking for right now? Right now, uh, Samot. Samot we'll find it. I'm yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's not available machines. This is this is the point. What are you we, looking for? We, we're Swiss looking machines? for no, not Swiss machine, center machine with uh, because one 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 center machine, center ma center machine with five x because some some you mean like like a milling machine, milling machine, uh, because of course some of is some of Mexico has a hundred percent automotive market, and one other one 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 strategy is get out portion of our avenue of the automotive well, that was, market. That was the next thing I was going to ask. Are you scared to be entirely automotive? Yeah, we are scared because move so faster and uh, uncertainly we have with automotive. Are you making stuff for electric cars as well? Yes, but we, we're looking for industrial. Here in Mexico, more from industrial and more complex part, low volume, but more complex and more value add. Right. Because this, we we're looking for this kind of of uh, we 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 verify some kind of this machine with four and five axes and new technology because it's different different business. Are you making stuff to ship outside of Mexico or for the Mexican domestic market? No, uh, only Mexico and U.S. Of course, uh, U.S. Okay. Of course, we have some some parts goes to Asia and Europe, but this is a small portion because the 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 big volume is stay in North America. How much stuff is going to stay in Mexico versus go to the United States from your company and and 
from no half and half half, half half and half half and half because the, the the half go directly from came from us and half assembly the this the the other company assembly in mexico and sent from us because of course more than 70 percent of the uh, manufacturing of mexico came from uh, came from us from american companies yeah, in the yeah, us sure interesting and i'm sure a lot of the pe- companies in your industrial park are owned by american companies yeah Interesting. Are you one of the few that are owned by a Brazilian? Maybe, maybe there are some some business we feel. What about? There's probably a lot of Europeans as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I think a lot of Spanish companies probably have them in Mexico. French. French. There are French companies, Spanish company. There are German company. Very uh, because follow the OEMs because there are a lot of German, French, and Asian uh, OEMs. And these OEMs bring here the base, the supplier base. Uh, we have mainly Asian, and there are a lot of of uh, of uh, international companies in Mexico. So they're assembling cars in Mexico, not just like that's it's. You guys are making auto uh, automotive parts for Mexico. A lot of them. Yeah, a lot of a lot. And they of. don't probably. I mean, I'm totally assuming this, but my assumption is they have a lot less electric cars in Mexico than they do in the United States because you don't have California. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but Mexico. The, the the problem of the electrical cars in Mexico, manufacturing cars in Mexico, uh, we we start to manufacture some parts in some companies. We some of don't manufacture any parts for electrical cars. But you Only, want to. Yeah. We want to. Yeah. Okay. We you have it, everybody. Yeah. Because it's the future. One, one thing we, we saw during after pandemic, uh, the projects accelerate. The companies want to accelerate the projects and quit the old projects and start new projects because they accelerate a lot, a lot of the new projects. Mm-hmm. So as far as future you you're seeing you guys diversifying into industrial trying to get into electric cars taking away a little bit of the automotive any other things that you are seeing you know the, as as ways you guys are are trying to bring the con- company forward uh, those are it no this is this is this our strategy is this and this is we will see in the future in the short future, because of course, is it really hard to find this other work? Yes. So do you have, how do you find the other work? Do you, I mean, I've done a whole season about people finding work and often what people say is it's just connections. It's word of mouth. It's quoting lots of jobs. You think finding work in Mexico is different? Is it more, you have a sales team and they go out and yeah, call we, everybody or we have a sales team and, and as well we have a couple Do representatives. You have a manufacturer's rep? Yeah. And that's one of the main ways you get? Yeah. What is something that uh you learned recently or you read or, or watched something that it doesn't have to be about manufacturing. It's something you found interesting. Yeah, what found interesting. The 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 strategy when when someone came from Mexico. The strategy is minimal automatization. Was the strategy was was automation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because of course, the same the same I believe the same problem U.S. lives some uh, Mexico lives as well because we don't have a labor. Mm-hmm. It's not non-skilled labor. There aren't. Of course, in the area we we stay. And are you? Are in. you? That's another thing you're doing with the company. You're just trying to automate, automate. Yeah, automated, automated. Are you buying cobots? Yeah. Which ones are you getting? Universal. Uh, universal robots. Why did you choose Universal over some of the other ones? Yes, because it's it's, it's not the brand. Because the only one has available the the robots to to deliver in a short time. It's only one has the robots uh, available. Really because interesting. It, yeah. Not Fanuc? Because Fanuc makes the collaborative robots as well. Yeah, it's well, but it's more expensive. It's not available. That is so interesting. Because I know, I mean, there's tons of companies doing them now, but Universal Robots is the, the one that you can get in Mexico. Yep. Yeah. And there are representative. Uh, the service is very good. Very good. Interesting. One other question. Um, do you have anything else to say to the people of the world or... 
there anything we didn't talk about that you think we should talk about? Yeah, the, the world changed change the strategies and the change is so faster. But you need to not, not uh, be crazy with this. You need to adapt it faster. Understand and adapt it faster. Because this is the, is the difference of the, the good managers and to understand the scenery and try to adapt it because the pandemic it learned, learned a lot for us. Yeah, no, totally. You know, like there was a guy who wrote a book, I can't remember what it's called, this guy I listened to named Scott Galloway, he says the world basically leaped 10 years into the future yep. because of the pandemic. You know, everything changed. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, how of leaders must be pay attention in the talents, because the talents uh, normally the people, normally the leader w would like to attract the talents with money, but it's not it's not money. If the people keep learning, keep learning, and and have the challenge gap, the, because this I I I'm very proud with my engineer team, mm -hmm. because learning day by day is not is not is not money because he has a propose from the future. He has purpose. Yeah, has a purpose. This is very you good. You feel like the people at your company have a lot of purpose. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you've got a really good culture then, if they're not just there to collect a paycheck. Yeah, yeah. This I, I'm proud about this because we, we some team can uh, survive during the pandemic and this team keeps strong and is strong day by day. Wow. Thank you so much. This was really fun. It's a pleasure to stay with you. He's staying the show. The show is very, it's amazing. It's a great show. I yeah. know. I, I, this is my third and last day and I could keep coming back, but I don't know. I'm not. So, uh, I wish you all the best in the rest of your stay in the United States and I hope to be in touch soon. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks for the interview. De nada. Thank you.